President Trump has an unlikely semi-defender these days, former President Jimmy Carter, who's, I think, 94. The former president told the New York Times that, quote, the media have been harder on Trump than any other president, certainly that I've known about. A big driver of that hostility could be an unprecedented divide between the American media and the country they write about. Ken Stern was CEO of NPR, National Public Radio, and a distinguished member of the liberal bubble himself. As a longtime Democrat, he realized he didn't know that many conservative Republicans, so he did what no one ever does, and he spent a year traveling the country to meet people who think differently from him on their own terms. He's got a brand new book out, which is excellent, about that experience called Republican Like Me, How I Left the Liberal Bubble and Learned to Love the Right. Ken Stern joins us tonight. What an amazing, what does your family say when you said, I want to get out there and meet people who vote differently. They thought I was crazy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I live on a nice Democratic street in Washington, D.C., and my house is 100% Democrat. Um, my wife and 10-year-old son was not, were not too approving of this notion, and I suspect my neighbors weren't either. Um, but I went out and really saw a world that I didn't know of. Uh, it was a remarkable experience. I learned tons about Republicans, about the country uh, uh, as a whole. Uh, and that's really the source of the book. Um, and it was boy. Right. I mean, you can't. We do this segments like this all the time on yeah. the show about the divide. And increasingly, no one ever talks to anybody they disagree with. What were your first impressions of well, this so, new world? So, so one of the, the the impulses for the book was the notion that we've actually become much more geographically and culturally divided yes. than before. We have, you know, um, ten years ago there were about a thousand landslide counties, counties that one party or another won by twenty yes. uh, percent or more. This time around there was twenty five hundred, about sixty percent of the country. We're increasingly dividing ourselves so that one side doesn't know the other, um, and. You know, uh, I think going in, I had a typical Democratic attitude, um, not very flattering towards Republicans. Um, but I sat in churches. I, you sent me pig hunting in Texas. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> that was my recommendation. It was. Yeah. And it was a great Did recommendation. Did you meet any liberals pig hunting in Texas? Pig hunting in Texas? <laughs> uh, maybe the pigs, but <laughs> no one else. Um, it was just a remarkable experience. I met people uh, who I had no, would never have met otherwise, who had led remarkable lives, who served their communities, who had, you know, I think, deep thoughts about the way their communities and their government should work. Uh, and I learned a ton from them. And, and that's really the experience. The funny thing learned. is, when you told me about this book, I think it was a couple of years ago, I thought it was a really cool idea. Now it seems like a completely radical idea yeah. that no one would ever do. How do you think, having done this and been in the media for so long, this divide affects the way that we cover news? It seems like most people who work in the press are from one America, but not the other. Yeah, I, I think it's um, a fair criticism. And, and I think, you know, so I was at NPR for a long time, and I knew, and I still know, that the people there um, uh, uh, try to tell a balanced story. Yeah. But what I never gave credit for until this time is that they live inside a certain um, bubble. We all do. Um, and it drives what stories they think are important, what stories, what sources they look to, how they think about the story, uh, and it's enor and it's enormous uh, um, challenge, I think, um, uh, for media um, because it means that they don't tell the stories of half the country, uh, and I think that's really what's missing from from mainstream. I media I think that's right. There's very little cultural yeah. diversity. Yeah. So I actually learned something as someone who's you know spent his life hunting around guns. I didn't know how often guns were used defensively yeah. by law-abiding people yeah. in this country until I read it from you. Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's an interesting thing. For all the issues I, I plunged into, climate change, uh, um, uh, um, poverty programs, and guns, I really learned a lot from people, from experts I would normally talk to. Yes. I talked to John Lott about guns and learned an enormous amount from him. Um, and, and the biggest story, the thing, and I'll get to defense of gun use is, look, uh, um, gun homicides in this country have gone down by over half over the last 20 years, as the number of guns in this country have gone up. Um, we, spend we spend time talking about gun control, but we don't actually talk about the things that actually drove gun homicides down over the last 20 years. Why don't we talk about that more? Um, the interest of the story, I didn't even know the term defensive gun use before this. Uh, and the Department of Justice estimates that it happens 60,000 times a year. There's a Florida State study that says about a million times a year. Um, uh, which, uh, but a lot. It happened either way, high end, low end. It happens a lot, and I actually found stories. I told one of them in the New York Post this week about how people use guns to protect themselves. It's just uh, an important part of the gun story. It just isn't spoken about. You, very you much. wrote about a store clerk Raleigh, who repelled yeah. a robber with gunfire, walks out, knocks the guy down with a bullet, cigarette in his mouth, and says, "Castle Doctrine, baby." Yeah, it's like a modern, <laughs> a modern so day cleaning It was an unbelievable story. Ken it's Stern, what a great, what a great yeah. book, and good for you for doing that. I don't know anybody else. Who would do that in yeah, your thank, world. Thank and you. Th and thank you, Tucker, for your help with the book. Oh, man, I love yeah. it.
California is about to punish people more harshly for using the wrong pronoun than for deliberately spreading disease. Is that unwise or are we just not woke enough to understand? Are you woke enough? That's next segment. Stay tuned.